But scientific dispute, which has been going on for the past 60 years, now smooth out the this dispute. It's the two theories are called oriented nucleation and oriented growth hypothesis. So we resolve the scientific dispute in favor of oriented nucleation. Right? What it means is the it's nucleation dependent. We use Q as a testing ground. It's nucleation dependent and it's growth dependent. Right? That's that's a two right of things in Rick's life detection of Right? I solved the problem in fair oriented nucleation. I don't know about doing readers or that that will I'll talk about it in a different lecture. Right? Now, Indra Joy, this problem was Jordi was interested in the familiar problem of cube nucleation. What breaks cube subbrains nucleate within the cube bands? We all know the recrystallization nucleus has to come from a cell or a subbrain. Right? But the point is, what makes it grow? It has to get a size advantage. The subbrain has to grow at a size and take off. There's a size advantage. What makes a cube subbrain so special? That's the question Indra has asked on this page here. Right? So they, they found by extensive transmission electron microscopy of cube oriented volumes, they proposed what is known as uh, differential stored energy model. What they did was they looked at cube subbrain, looked at the dislocation content in the cube subbrain, and they found that whenever cube nucleates, there was an S component. S component is a deformation texture component. When you roll the aluminum, you get S. Right, a deformation texture component. That's 1, 2, 3, 6, 3, 4 bar. S component is given by 